Welcome to Watch This Space. I'm NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, and today we're going to visit the historic Launch Complex 39A, where we launched all of our moon missions and even some space shuttle missions. Today we have a very special guest, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX. We are at the Kennedy Space Center at Launch Complex 39A, which is a very historic uh, I would say not just launch complex, but a very historic monument for our country. From this launch complex, we launched all of our missions to the moon. We also launched space shuttles. And we have a, a really exciting event that's happening tonight, which is the reason why we're here, which is tonight we're going to launch with what we call Demo 1, which is a mission to the International Space Station with Crew Dragon. In other words, uh, it's, it's not crewed but it is a test flight going all the way to the International Space Station. Now, where we are right now on Launch Complex 39A, we're on a what we call the crew arm, which is the way the astronauts are actually going to get to the capsule so that they can fly to the International Space Station. Now, that's not going to happen tonight, but tonight we're going to test the vehicle, all components of the vehicle. And I am uh, thrilled and honored to be here at this very hist historic site with Elon Musk, who has been an amazing partner for NASA for all of the years to get us to this point where what we want to do this year is launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. And getting to this point, as you and I have talked, was not something that came easy. It's not something that came fast. But step by step, you have gotten us to the point where we're ready almost to take that next step. I'd like to start just by asking you, the, the story that is out there is that there was a time in your life when you made a trip to Russia and your intent was actually to buy, uh, I guess, a, an excess intercontinental ballistic missile. Yeah, uh, without, for, without the nuke. Without the nuke, right? Yeah. Without the nuke, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, um, that's extra. <laughs> yeah, that's actually right. So tell me about why you were there yeah. and ultimately how it resulted in, in this moment right now. Uh, sure, well, uh, the, the, Originally, I was not going to start a rocket company. Um, I, I really wanted us to uh, become a space marine civilization um, and uh, a multi-planet species. And I, I, I thought, uh, if, if there's something I could do to get the public excited about uh, um, sending uh, people to Mars um, and maybe having a base, permanent base on the moon, I wanted to do a philanthropic mission uh, to send a small uh, greenhouse to the surface of Mars so you'd have this amazing shot of green plants on a red background. And I thought that would really inspire the public. And if the public got inspired about, uh, about sending life to Mars, then they would uh, tell their senators and congressmen to uh, appropriate more money for NASA so that we could do that. So my initial goal was actually just to increase NASA's budget. Um, and then what I found was that, first of all, the Russians really started charge, wanted to charge me way, way more than I could afford. I should, they wanted to charge me more money than I had uh, to, to do the philanthropic mission. Um, and so that was ended up not really being an option. Um, and I thought, well, uh, is there any way to uh, make a, uh, a lower cost uh, and especially a reusable uh, rocket system in the U.S.? Um, and so I just read every book I possibly could on rocket engineering um, and decided to, to try giving it a go, essentially to uh, um, give NASA uh, uh, more options, more and more, more, more this sort of technology, but like more technology horses in the stable, essentially, uh, to make to, to use in order to uh, get humanity uh, into space and, and become multi planet species. And you started with a much smaller rocket, the Falcon 1. And was your goal at that point, when you started with Falcon 1, to get to the point where we had nine engines for Falcon 9? Was that your goal at that time? When I started SpaceX, I, I only thought there was maybe a 10% chance of getting Falcon 1 to orbit. I did not at all think that this would happen. Uh, so this is for sure a dream come true. Um, uh, but I, I, literally at the time, I didn't know anything about rockets. So, and I was, you know, I've been the chief engineer of SpaceX since day one. And I don't really know anything about rockets, which is why the first three rockets failed. Right. Um, and then... So, so the first three Falcon 1s for SpaceX yes. were failures. Yes. And then, what, the, tell me about uh, the fourth. The, the fourth one, so I had, I'd actually only had enough money for three, three flights. Um, so I had no more money left, and we managed to, to, to the, the, the team sort of rally, and we managed to put together enough spare parts to create a, to do a fourth launch, and that fourth launch was successful. Um, and 
Uh, and so we, what, what would have happened if it wasn't successful? Oh, well, we would, SpaceX would have died. So we sure. would not be here right now, uh, at this moment, getting ready to launch Crew Dragon to the International yes. Space Station. Wow, yeah. so that's an amazing story of, uh, of taking a risk and actually coming out on top and enabling not just you and SpaceX, but enabling the United States of America to come to this very critical point in, in American history. Absolutely, and the, I just like to express uh, a, a, you know a great appreciation for NASA and, and acknowledge the the debt that that SpaceX owes NASA uh, in, in developing all, all of the rocket. The rocket technology that that we built our rockets on was developed by NASA uh, over many decades, and, and we we without that SpaceX would not have been possible. Um, and. Uh, and shortly after our first success, NASA gave us a, a, a critical contract to resupply the space station with cargo, um, and that was also uh, fundamental to SpaceX's success. And without NASA support, SpaceX wouldn't, wouldn't be here. So well, thank this, you. Oh, that, well, yeah. it was long before my yeah. time, but uh, I'd like to thank NASA. Yeah, thank, yeah thank, <laughs> thank, thank the United States of America yeah. for supporting this really amazing Absolutely. opportunity. Well, we have now learned the events surrounding Elon Musk's decision to start SpaceX. Let's meet some of the astronauts that will be launching on Commercial Crew. Yes. Um, but uh, that was in 2001 when all of that kind of started materializing and, and we started having these, these thoughts. I wanted to ask Victor, who's going to be one of our, one of our pilots of, of these crew vehicles, uh, 2001. 2001. Victor, where were you in, in 2001? Learning to fly jets, okay. and I uh, sure. actually got my wings that year. Cool. So, that so, Vic awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Victor was uh, a navy, a naval aviator, uh, getting his wings. What what month was that? Two thousand one. December two thousand one. Okay. So you got yours about five months ahead of me. I was in May of two thousand one, uh, but you obviously did much better than I did because I <laughs> I ended up running a museum and then becoming a politician, and you went on to become an astronaut. I'm not you can say that now, sir. Yeah, well, <laughs> My job is much easier than you. Yours. I, I can tell you that. Of course, uh, we're we're so proud of, of all of our astronauts. You guys have all made your whole country proud. Bob, how about you? Can you remember maybe 